Traders, Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com on August the 2nd, 2015. Yesterday was my birthday, so I didn't post anything on the blog. I spent some of the day writing until the wee hours of the morning in my soon-to-be-released book. I'm 99% complete. In this video, we'll talk about the indices, how I see most of them uh, looking weaker from a Kumo or Ichimoku basis. The comp and the NDX um, 100 are somewhat stronger. The NYSC composite, however, is overbought and putting in a lower high. We noted that tick and tick Q are both moving lower. The NYSE and NASI both are mildly positive and the NAMO is somewhat iffy. Okay, the NYSE shows a cross up breath. We're watching the New York Stock Exchange advance decline. The bounce is still diverging from the sideways price action and the NYHL is still not out of the woods yet. CPC near an inflection zone for equities. Currencies, US dollar is bullish. Bonds, TLT is uh, showing a this is not correct. Bonds, we see TLT is higher and a Kumo breakout is looming. Junk bonds, as you would expect, yields are bearish. They're below Kumo as well as HYG. Commodities, crude oil, copper, gold, whatever you look at is bearish. And we're looking for more of a pullback. Maybe a little bit of a bounce this week. In setups, we're going to look at some IBD50. The new list, observations and setups, uh, and we'll also filter for the 10 East Stow MACD setup. Okay, let's start right off with the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index of 2,000 stocks. We note that Stow is in the red zone and we've yet to put in a new high. The 50 period moving average is rolling over, the 200 period is right below and price just barely above the 10 period EMA. We gapped up, moved lower on Friday, put in an inverted candle there. So we're seeing sellers taking control and bulls losing control. I would expect that we may have seen a reversal candle on Friday on most of the indices. So we'll keep an eye on that. Also note that high low did turn back up last week but it is still in a descending pattern as well. If we look at a Kumo version of the same chart of NYA, we can tell that we are below Kumo, so we're bearish. We see Chiku below price as well and below Kumo. Note where slow Sto is. This is 14.1, the previous was 5.1, and MACD is below the zero line. So these are all bearish indications unless we can find some catalyst to break out above Kumo. You also see a Kumo twist here and Senku span A is down below B. So that's bearish as well. If we look at the weekly chart, however, we're just about ready to see a cross of Tinken and Kijinsan, which is somewhat bearish. It's above the Kumo, so that's a little bit weaker signal. We do have Kumo below. It is a little narrow. So that could break down if price action doesn't find a footing and move higher. What the catalyst will be, I can't tell you. But MACD is starting to drop below the zero line as well on the weekly chart. So I would issue caution this week and see how price action starts on Monday. Here is a chart of the Daily Spiders ETF. Price managed to move above the 10 and the 50 period moving average as well as this large volume by price bar which is now support. This happened last week. We saw that reversal, possible reversal candle on Friday. I think it might turn out to be that, but we're going to keep an eye on it on Monday morning. We'll watch the opening range. If we have a breakout above the high of the opening range, we will go long. We're currently flat. We have no positions uh, going into the close on Friday. We note where Slow Stow is in the red zone and MACD 
showed very little momentum uh, last week, even though we did see this move higher. Traders were talking about that as volume tapered off, and then we saw increased volume on Friday. The previous week we saw declining price action on increased volume. So that could return. We'll keep an eye on it. We're looking at these previous pivots at 211.45. We closed the day on Friday at 210.50. The high of the day was 211.45, that same pivot level that we saw back in late April. Shifting gears and looking at the comp for a minute, we continue to be in this ascending pattern. Prices are above all of the moving averages. We did have a red day on Friday, slightly above average volume. Slow Sto and MACD both look positive and bullish above the zero line on MACD. And we see the number of stocks trading above the 50 period moving average is at 56%. We're putting in lower highs here, and we see a little bit of a turn on Thursday, Friday. The thing that I am interested in is the fact that NASDAQ is above the volume by price resistance level, so this is support now. However, if we look at the Ichimoku version, we see that Chiku is below price, and it turned back up and ran into price on Friday. So we'll be looking for this to resolve through price or to get rejected and move lower. If the latter occurs, then we can expect to see a little move down on NASDAQ, which has been the stronger of the indices lately. Small caps showed some resilience last week. This is the Russell 2000 weekly chart. We note that prices came down to the 50 period moving average and found buyers. It's back inside of the narrowing Bollinger Bands, which is interesting in itself. We have the 10 EMA crossing down below the 20 period moving average, the center of the Bollinger Bands, however. So that's something to keep in mind. Slow Sto is trying to turn and MACD just dipped below the zero line. So that's somewhat bearish, but the longer term duration is still above the zero line. So we watch small caps this week for any indications that we could lead the indices lower if those turn lower as well. The mid cap 400 index, we note the inverted candle, a dragonfly doji on Friday. Slow sto, both are almost in the red zone. The 14.1 has yet to get there. However, MACD is still below the zero line. We're noting this large volume by price congestion area that price would have to get through. We don't think that's going to happen. The 50 period moving average is turning over now and price is barely above the 10 period EMA. We're looking for this to move lower with everything else that we pointed out thus far. The 200 period is just below and we could retest that. Note where the volume by price tapers off. Price gets down below this level at 1,494.75 and we could see prices drop off fairly quickly back to the 200 period moving average. Again, this is the mid cap 400 S&P stocks. We're also seeing lower highs as well as lower lows. The Dow Jones Composite Average, which is a index made up of 65 stocks in the industrials, utilities, and transport sectors. We note the descending channel, prices coming back up to the 65 period moving average, the purple line. We have this volume by price bar as resistance. We're starting to fail there as well as the upper channel line. In addition, we see slow sto in the red zone and MACD is having difficulty getting back above the zero line. The longer duration remains below the zero line. Looking at a Kumo version of the same index, we can clearly see that price is below Kumo. We have resistance overhead. Chiku is caught up in price right here. And we look like we're going to get resistance like we saw on some of the other charts previously. Tenkinsen has been rejected by Kijinsen, and overall this chart is bearish. This is a view of the spider sectors plus IYR, IYT, and XBI. Note that last week we had the reverse situation where Slow Sto in most cases was oversold and gave us some tailwind for a move higher. Now we have the opposite with the exception of XBI. 
uh, most of these sectors have hit overbought and are either trending lower or about to turn down or are in the overbought zone and could turn down very quickly. So with the exception of XLV, this is trending a little bit higher and XBI both in the same basic area, uh, industry groups, we could see further downside. XLP is starting to, to trade higher, but overall the sectors don't promote higher prices on the S&P 500 at this time. Of particular interest are the transports. If you follow Dow Theory, we had a little bit of a breakout last week, pushed above this upper channel line. Note the 200 period moving average is flat and prices above the 10 EMA. We did see a little bit of volume last week and then it tapered off towards Friday. We're in the red zone on slow stow. And MACD is trying to get back above the zero line. It spent most of the last four months below same. Another sector we'd like to see move higher and pick up the pace is XLF, which has paused since two weeks ago, hitting those highs in this upper channel line. We do have support down a little bit lower and the rising 50 period moving average. Nothing to panic about just yet. If we want to see the S&P 500, the spiders and the NASDAQ continue to move higher, we need to see financials continue to participate. MACD is above the zero line, slow stow is approaching the red zone, and we see volume tapering off as prices are putting in a lower high. Tick cumulative has turned back down again, continues to drift lower as we're putting in a lower high. As we pointed out on the spider charts, we want to keep that in mind. We also noted that trend was very elevated and we saw a lot of selling on Friday. Tick cumulative on the NASDAQ, tick Q. We have the same scenario, continue to trend lower. We're below the 10 period EMA as we're putting in a lower high at a previous pivot level on the comp. NAMO for the NASDAQ composite, we're approaching the zero line. We do note previous times where we pushed lower, headed back towards the zero line, and we failed just shy of a move higher, uh, similar to previous breakouts. And when we look at the NICE, or excuse me, when we look at the NASI, we continue to see summation index moving lower. The NICE and the NIMO, similar thoughts. We are at areas where we saw previous pivots at the 16 and 18 level. We closed at 1867. So breath was moving a little bit higher. We note the moving average is moving towards the zero line. However, we're putting in lower highs. And we're going to keep an eye on NICE to see what happens with this crossover that we put in on Friday. Bullish percent continues to fall off. That's good for the bulls, uh, bad for the bears, but there are other indicators we want to keep an eye on. CPC, we noted on Thursday that it put in a really extreme low at around 60.62. It closed higher at 76 on that day, but note that as we approach these highs that a lot of times CPC can proceed price somewhat. So we're looking for this to possibly move lower. It's a caveat that we'll keep an eye on this week. The NYA, New York Stock Exchange Composite, we did note that we had some elevated buying last week. The bulls were outnumbering the bears on up-down volume. We need to keep an eye on that. If we see a spike in down volume on Monday, Tuesday, coupled with a breakdown in the opening range, that could be very bearish. In addition, we're watching for a, the reverse, which is a breakout to the upside of the opening range highs. We also have to be mindful of the New York Stock Exchange advanced declining issues. Continues to move lower and diverging from price. It did bounce uh, midweek, and we did see a nice little change in character. However, this could put in a lower high and continue to move lower as we see price action reversing on Friday. The VIX also put in lows that we saw previous highs. Uh, below 12, we noted the last time that we hit this high uh, around the 20th that we saw that similar low back in December and then we had a nice sell-off which wasn't quite as profound as December but we did have a nice move lower the previous week. 
to last and now we're looking for a pause here with VIX also low so this is uh, not a good thing for if you're bullish uh, considering all the other things that we've talked about thus far VIX VXV the front month to the three month volatility indexes the ratio pushing lower down to levels that we normally see an inflection point so we'll keep an eye on this chart as well with the S&P 500 that reversal candle and what might happen over the next few days considering VIX VXV the US dollar bounced off of the area around the 20 period moving average continues to drift higher got back above the 10 period EMA put in a little bit of a dragonfly doji hanging man on Friday so we'll keep an eye on that going into the week if you're bullish equities you want to see the US dollar move lower as well as the commodities if you're bullish there you want to see US dollar drop off don't think that's the case I think we're going to continue to drive higher with respect to the US dollar that means commodities will likely be weak again going into the week we're at lows that we haven't seen in quite some time gas continues to move lower unleaded with the price of crude oil gold is also at lows we mentioned last week in the Sunday video the number of hedge funds that are net short gold crude continues to move lower note the candle on Friday very bearish looking with the US dollar continuing to grind higher looking at any of these charts from an Ichibuku's perspective it's very clear how it's very clear how bearish these charts are here's crude well below Kumo Chiku pointing down Tikken and Kijin Sam both leading price down as well copper and silver of course silver had a little bit of a bounce last week we could see a follow-through note flat kitchen sand overhead and Kumo resistance starting around 1480 bonds as you would expect we moved right up to the upper trend line and the 200 period moving average we put in a doji which is a reversal candle in some people's minds so keep an eye on this one next week if this falls off that would confirm a move higher in SPY and the indexes if this continues to push through the 200 period that could bode uh, bad signs could bring bad signs for equity bulls here is a Kumo version of TLT We can see we're about to break out of Kumo or find resistance in this area more than likely we could put in resistance but it's the caveat that bulls don't want to talk about uh, for equities if this breaks out we're talking about higher prices on TLT and more than likely lower prices on equities junk bonds yields are definitely moving lower in sharp contrast to uh, TLT moving higher of course Tinkin San and Kijin San continue to follow price down note where Chiku is near price and turning back down so that doesn't look good for junk bonds or HYG looking at the IBD 50 uh, a little bit differently this week we have a few new names AKRX is back on the list ENDP has been added in addition we have WETF WALL fell off Visa is on for the second week SBNY Signature Bank is on new PGTI is back on the list and I can icon PLC ICLR let's take a look at these using a candle glance format and we'll take a look at the charts that look the best note ALK continues to move higher we took that one last week after being briefly stopped on Wednesday we're back in on Thursday Friday looking pretty good the 10E Sto MACD setup is working well for us AKRX is new it's moving lower 
AGN moving lower. A number of these stocks, uh, 10 of them are on the, have earnings this week. We have to make a note of them. AGN, RGEN, REGN, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, Monster, Great Television, Paycom, Software, Criterio, EPAM, AMC Networks, and Papa John's Pizza, all reporting this week. Hawk continues to move higher. We were looking to take this one last week. We're still close to a breakout level, so we may take that one if things don't change dramatically tomorrow. AMBA is looking pretty good as well. Holding a 10 period moving average, a little doji. Prices are looking pretty solid there. And Slow Stow is oversold, turning back up in the near future. MACD above the zero line. We're watching for that to turn back up as well. Ozark, we marked up an Ichimoku version. And we're noting that prices are now inside a Kumo. We have a Kumo twist that we should be concerned about if this develops further. We also have a bearish Chiku cross. All right, that's very bearish. If this continues to move lower, price action could drop down through Kumo and we can see lower prices on Ozark. Keep an eye on this stock this week. ICLR, Icon PLC, healthcare providers, industry group. Note that this one took off like a Roman candle last week. We'll keep an eye on this one for a flag possibly a pullback. Note the volume, probably a buyout candidate or something along those lines. We'll have to do some homework. Signature Banks is on the list. It's sitting right on the 50 period moving average. Slow Stow is in the oversold zone and MACD is drifting below the zero line. We're going to keep an eye on this one. This would, could break down below the 50 period moving average even though it was just added to the IBD 50 list. Wisdom Tree Investments WETF looking pretty interesting and broke out this week. Note the Bollinger Bands are starting to spread. Slow Stow moving higher. MACD above the zero line. This is a nice 10 East Stow MACD setup on increased volume. We'll keep an eye on this one. There's no overhead supply. New 52 week highs. This one could continue to move higher. So put this on your watch list for this week. TMH is also new. Team Health Holdings. Healthcare providers looking like they're picking up steam again. Watch for this breakout level above the current close, which is 67.41. Take out those highs. This one could continue to move higher. Note the Bollinger Bands are starting to expand. Slow Stow moving higher. MACD above the zero line and its signal line. Slow Stow 10E MACD setup with very little overhead supply and prices could continue to put in new 52 week highs. SSNC, SSNC Technologies and Holdings, software company. Note the nice bullish move last week. Look for a flag here. Prices to move sideways and let the 10 EMA catch up. No overhead supply. It's at 52 week highs. Note the increased volume. Slow stow in the overbought zone, however, and MACD above its zero line. Looking pretty good on this stock. PGTI is back on the list building industrial materials broke out. We were looking for this to happen a couple of weeks ago when it was on the list. It failed, moved back down, consolidated, touched the 50 period moving average, and then started taking off this past week. A 10E Stow MACD setup. Looking at an Ichimoku version, you can see the stock took off after it had a Kumo breakout, continues to pull back to Kumo, find support, and then take off again. Stock looks pretty good. Make sure you check out uh, the opening range high and low tomorrow. We will as well. What we're looking for is for the, the spiders to break down and go short. Uh, considering the reversal candle we saw on Friday, if it's in fact what we're going to see. If we take out the opening range high, we'll go long and it'll probably negate that reversal candle thought on Monday. All right, that's going to do it for me tonight. It's the weekend. I had my birthday and we're looking to do some things tonight with the family, so I'm going to cut it short tonight. Take care, and we'll talk to you on Monday. Okay, so this is Cousin Vinny coming to you from theclosingprint.com. For you new traders, be sure to check out these top five or six videos, which will give you a better edge on understanding the markets, taking setups, 
and where to position yourself for the highest risk reward on your trade. In addition, if you don't subscribe to the blog, this is a spam free site. Enter your email address in here and you can get these delivered to your email every day. Uh, you'll note my tweets are here. The watch list for the week or the day. You can just scroll down through these to keep in track of the trades that we're looking at, whether they're high tight flags or Bollinger Band setups. It's also a place for me to document the trades and thoughts going into the weeks. So I hope this helps. Take care. We'll talk to you on the stream on Monday.